here, especially when my guest is in the box. I'm asking, thank you, uh, Emoji J. Uh, when my guest is in the box, my guests are revealing and talking about personal and private information. And I expect you guys to be respectful because they are going out of their way to share some personal details and stories about their life for your benefit, for the benefit of promoting the topic of forgiveness, promoting the, con the concept of love. So I do expect everybody to be respectful. If you aren't respectful, you will kindly be escorted out of the stream and you can come back next time because I don't keep anybody blocked. So um, let's come back next time uh, when I'm just doing a normal stream and you can be as weird as you wanna be. We love everybody. Um, okay, also I am not a mental health expert. I am someone who's an advocate and proponent of forgiveness. I'm not a mental health expert. So if you do hear anything that you are triggered by, if you hear anything that maybe invokes some uh, trauma for you guys, make sure you, uh, you advocate and demonstrate self-care for yourself. Uh, demonstrate that self-care for yourself. And if you are struggling with mental illness or uh, mental issues, we do encourage you guys to seek out a professional, okay? So let me tell you a little bit, what's up? Our guest is in the house. Uh, guys, make sure y'all hit Galena with the favorite. She's gonna be our guest here in a little bit and you guys don't want to miss not only her uh, story here tonight, but nor her normal everyday live streams as well as her own show, which she'll tell us about here in a little bit, guys. Amazing, amazing streamer. One of my favorite people on this app, if not the entire world. So y'all make sure to favorite her. This is how the show is going to go. We're going to talk about the definition of forgiveness as we do every week. Now, what some of my regulars, maybe more, we talk about this every single week. It's very, very important that we all know what we are talking about when we're talking about forgiveness. Because as we've already seen in the comment section, some people may have a skewed idea of what forgiveness is. Some people often get forgiveness confused with excusing or pardoning someone's behavior, which is not what forgiveness is. And then when we get into our forgiveness challenge and we read this article, we'll understand that the author of this article has forgiveness a little bit skewed. So make sure that you uh, listen to when we talk about that definition, that static definition. What do I mean by static definition? That concrete definition of forgiveness that we can use to, know, to be all on the same page. And then there are also dynamic aspects of forgiveness. What do I mean by that? So while we have a st static definition of forgiveness, we also know that that looks differently when played out in different people's lives. We, we, it, when it looks, it looks different for in Galena's life as it looks in different in my life, in John's life, and Sally's life, that's one of the cool things about having this show. Because when we have this show and we get to listen to different people's perspectives, we get to look at what forgiveness looks like in different people's lives and how it can evolve and grow and look differently. So that's what we mean when we talk about the, the dynamic aspects of forgiveness. Then we're going to get into our forgiveness challenge. Now, normally we, we talk during our forgiveness challenge about a concept of forgiveness that makes forgiveness hard. This week we're doing a little bit different. As I said, there's an article that is anti-forgiveness, anti-forgiveness that I found on the, on, the, on the internet. And it's very, very well written, extremely, exquisitely well written, actually. But we're going to pick this article apart and see maybe why the author got some things a little bit wrong and how we can understand forgiveness a little bit better through reading this anti-forgiveness article. Then we're going to have our forgiveness example. This week, it comes from the Forgiveness Project book which is, again, the inspiration for the show. And we're going to be learning about the mother of a murder victim and how she was able to achieve forgiveness. And then, of course, we have our distinguished guest, the one and only Top Badge Galena in the house. Y'all don't want to miss her story. She's an amazing person. I just I cannot say enough positive things about her. So you guys make sure to stay tuned for her story. So now let's go ahead and get started. Thank you for the alert. Let's get started with the actual content now guys let's talk about what forgiveness is because as we've already seen in the comment section uh, here forgiveness means different things to different people but if we can get that static definition definition of forgiveness we can all be on the same page going forward so i am going to use the definition advocated by desmond tutu and if you don't know who desmond tutu is he's an archbishop author and speaker one of the most prolific advocates of forgiveness in the world if you've never read any of his works or hear, heard of any of his speeches, I highly, highly encourage you. What's up, big country? I highly, highly encourage you to read uh, or listen to what some of the, the, the things that he's written and spoken about. Really, really good stuff. His definition is what we go with, and it's pretty close to what you're going to find in the dictionary or online or anything else. Forgiveness is releasing the right to hate, releasing the right to take revenge, and in so doing, 
releasing ourselves from the chains of victimhood. I'm gonna say that again. Forgiveness is releasing the right to hate, releasing the right to revenge, and in so doing, releasing ourselves from the chains of victimhood. Now, this is the, the strongest and most central way to healing, the most central way to good, strong mental health. However, it goes against our nature. It goes against our nature. And this is one of the reasons why forgiveness is so hard for so many people. But when somebody hurts us, right, what is our reaction? If somebody hurts us, right, we want to hurt them back. If someone comes up and punches you in the face, right, if you're not Chris Rock, what you want to do? You want to punch them back. That's a very natural reaction. And want, yes, revenge. It's very, very natural to want to take revenge. And I don't want to condemn or chastise anybody here who has that reaction because it is a natural reaction that all of us have. Forgiveness is about retraining our brain so that we can have a more empowered response. Now, the problem with the natural response, see, Meet Me agrees with me, the problem with the natural response and taking revenge and hurting someone who hurts us is that we are giving that person mental and emotional power that they do not deserve, okay? So when someone hurts us, right? Maybe they, maybe they cheat on us. Maybe they say something nasty about us, right? Maybe they do something that, we really, that really, really hurts us. That person goes off, they're living their life. They're not thinking about that, what they did to you from day to day. They're off doing their own thing right? Most of the time. The person who's living with that toxicity, the person who is living with that mental weight and baggage is us, the people who get hurt. So when we continue to let resentment and toxicity and ill will towards the person who hurt us fester inside us and continue to weigh on us, we are giving that hurt more power. Now, forgiveness is all about freedom. Forgiveness is about taking our power and control back. There was just a crash right outside my uh, condo. I hope the person's okay. Anyway, sorry, I got a little distracted. Wow, this is a really bad crash. I hope that person is okay, but we will carry on. Um, I'm sure my neighbors heard it. Somebody will go out there. Um, I'm sorry, it's a very busy intersection. Back to the content. More is a little bit ADHD, if you, don't, if you guys don't know. Now, we don't want to give somebody who hurts us more power than they already have. Because here's what happens, right? Who has heard the expression, put a one in the comment section if you've heard the expression, hurt people hurt people, right? How many of us have heard that, right? Hurt people hurt people. Now here's the thing, when we're living with unforgiveness, when we're holding on to that resentment and ill will towards the person who hurt us, that is occupying mental energy that wears us down every day. And the problem is when we hold on to that hurt, Usually what happens is we either subconsciously or consciously take that out on the people in our lives. And unfortunately, that's going to be the people usually that we love or the people that we're closest to. This could be our, our family, our, you know, your parents, your, your children, your spouse, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, uh, you know, your kids, your coworkers, your friends. So you holding on to that ill will letting that fester in your brain, letting that fester in your heart and, on, and, and, and in your mental energy is going to be subverted onto the people that you care about, the people that you're closest with. So then that power that we're letting that person have over us, now we're letting that person, right, rent free. We're letting that person rent, live rent free in our brains and in our hearts. We're letting that person not only hurt us, now we're letting them hurt the people in our lives. Think about that. When you're holding on to unforgiveness, you're letting that person hurt other people in your lives. You don't want to give that. Now, the biggest thing you can do to get your power back is to forgive. And the reason is, is because you are releasing that ill will towards that person and then so doing, releasing yourself from being a victim. Now, this is not easy. I recognize that it's easy, but it is actually relatively simple. And we're going to talk about the difference between simple and easy here in a bit. But do not let somebody who hurt you have more power than they deserve. The biggest thing you can do to show someone who hurt you your power is to show them that they do not have any control over how you live your life. Do not let that person dictate how you live your life. Now, a lot of people have a hard time with this because they, un they accidentally or through whatever learning and education they had, they mistake forgiveness with pardoning. 
Now, a lot of the times when we think forgiveness, we think of the pardoning version of forgiveness that like when we go to God and say, God, please forgive me for what I did. Please help it all be cleaned as white, like help my sins be from white, uh, be as white as snow, cast it, cast my sins as east as uh, uh, far as east is from the west. That's not what forgiveness is. That's pardoning. That's saying that what you did has no consequences. All right. For, the difference between forgiving and pardoning is pardoning is, set, is releasing someone from the consequences of their actions. Now, somebody hurts you. We're not saying we let that go. We're not saying that we forget that. We're not saying that there are going to be consequences to those actions. And in just a second, when we talk about the dynamic aspects of forgiveness, we're going to understand why holding somebody accountable is actually a central part of forgiveness. We don't want to let them go because then what they're, they're going to do, they're going to feel free to hurt us again or somebody else. And we don't want that. We don't want someone to continue hurting. Them. We definitely want to hold people accountable for their actions, but wishing ill on that person, taking revenge against that person, wanting to pay, repay eye for an eye for that person. That does nothing but bring toxicity in your life, it wears you down and it's going to subvert negative mental energy in the people that are closest to you. Don't give that person any more power than they deserve. If someone hurt you, they deserve, they don't deserve any of your power. Now, when we get to the, let's talk about the dynamic aspects of forgiveness. Well, time out. Before I do, let me talk one more, one more, one more aspect of the static definition of forgiveness. If you notice, there's the word right in the definition of forgiveness. This is releasing the right to hate. I'm releasing the right to revenge. And in so doing, I'm releasing myself from the chains of victimhood. Now, why does the word right live in there? Why do we not just say releasing, releasing hate, releasing revenge? Why do we say releasing the right to hate? Because even, there may be those of you out there who say, okay, more, I'm not actively taking revenge against this person every day. I'm not actively hating this person every day, right? But if I, if I wanted to, I deserve it. I deserve it. I deserve to do it. I may not be acting on it, but I deserve to hurt that person. The problem with that is even if you're not acting on it, you are still allowing that person mental and emotional baggage and power in your heart, on your mind, that they do not deserve. By failing to let go of that desire to see that person suffer, you are going to continue to live with that weight on your shoulder. Don't give that person any more power than they deserve. Now, when we talk about the dynamic aspects of forgiveness, and if you're just joining us, this is Forgiveness Culture. Every week we, we uh, explore the hope and peace that can be found in forgiveness, which is a central part of healing. And we're so glad that you joined us here today. The dynamic aspects of forgiveness talk about how does forgiveness look in different people's lives. Now, like I said, forgiving someone does not mean releasing them from the consequences of their action. No, 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 no. We're not saying but what you did has no consequences. We're not saying that what you did is not going to have a reaction. Right. But what we're saying is we are not going to be wishing ill will on you. We're not going to be advocating suffering for you because that is going to do nothing but bring out, but bring you down. Now, when we talk about the dynamic aspects of forgiveness, we have to keep in mind that there's consequences for your action. Now, in some instances, if someone hurts us to a, to a, a, a significant enough degree, right, that consequence could be even mean jail time. If somebody assaults you or, or robs you, right? One of the consequences of that action could be actually going to prison. Sometimes it can mean the end of a relationship, right? Put a one in the comment section if you've had to forgive someone, but also had to, to, to cut them out of your life because they are no longer a healthy part of your life. Put a one in the comment section if that's you. I should be seeing a lot of ones here, y'all. Wake up. Wake up. It's not that late. Wake up. It's not that late. All right. There we go. Just because we forgive someone doesn't mean that person has to, uh, uh, deserves a place in our life. That, no, not too early in some people's case. Just because some, we forgive someone does not mean that they have a place in our life, right? Sometimes the healthiest thing we can do for a relationship is let it go. Right. If that person is continuing to hurt us, if that person is continuing to 
bring toxicity and damage into our life and not be a productive part of that life. Sometimes that is the best thing to do, but we don't have to wish ill towards that person. Keep that in mind. Just because we have to let someone go, does it mean we have to, uh, uh, just because we have to let someone go, doesn't mean we have to wish ill towards them. There's an expression that we talk about every week, which is just because I want to see you eat, doesn't mean I want you at my dinner table. And just because I, I don't want you at my dinner table, doesn't mean I don't want you to eat. You can, you can release someone without wishing negative feelings on them, without wishing harm on them, and without hoping that something bad happens to them. Because again, that is negative mental energy that you are going to be subverting towards people in your life that they don't deserve it. And why should somebody else deserve negative energy because of something somebody else did? They don't. I'll answer that for you. Now, that one of the cool things about this show is that every week we hear from guests who forgiveness looks different in their life. And this week we're blessed with Galena. She's one of my favorite people in the whole world. She's gonna have a great story for us. And that gets to demonstrate the dynamic aspects of forgiveness that we're talking about because forgiveness looks so different in different people's lives. That's the cool thing. So if you're just joining us, this is Forgiveness where we explore the hope and peace that can be found in forgiveness every week. I realize that I'm running a little behind. So I am this week's forgiveness challenge if you've never seen the forgiveness challenge before, it's a part of the show. I don't know why I did that weird thing with my tongue. That was a little weird. Uh, for, if you want to see more weird things like that, join uh, Galena's show, Cringe, tomorrow. Um, lots of crazy stuff like that happens. Anyways, back to uh, forgiveness culture. Um, this week, Normally on uh, the forgiveness challenge part of the evening, we talk about something about forgiveness that makes it difficult. But this week, this week I had a little fun, all right? This week, I actually Googled forgiveness culture to see what would come up. And when I Googled forgiveness culture, you know what one of the first results was? I saw an article said, that said, the name of the article was, to hell with forgiveness culture. And I was like, oh my God, did they see my show? No, 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 no. She was actually just talking about the culture of forgiveness. And she, was, she actually wrote an article about why she feels forgiveness is harmful to society. Now, one of the things I really advocate everybody to do is always read things that go against your opinion. I don't care if it's political. I don't care if it's philosophical. One of the best ways to learn, one of the best ways to grow, and one of the best ways to increase your knowledge is to read articles, books, material that goes against your opinion. Because one of two things is going to happen when you, when you read something that's against your opinion. Either A, you're going to be strengthened in your beliefs, and you're going to make your beliefs even more solid. Or two, you might actually read something that changes your mind and gets you to, ex to expand your mind and see something different. So I read this article called To Hell with Forgiveness Culture, and I got to say, the author, she did an exquisite job writing this. She did a fantastic job writing and she made some really really good points now it's about four pages long and i'm not i don't definitely don't have time to go through all this i have like five minutes um but i wanted to point out a few things that uh i thought were poignant when it comes to her article one of the and so i'm going to just kind of pick up apart this argument so this is coming from the, the article forgiveness is not justice The flaw in our cultural understanding of what forgiveness is, is that someone can wrong you for reasons best known to themselves. They can abuse me, they can abuse you, they can defame you. But when you're calling someone out for being abusive, it leads to the perception that the, vict the victim is merely being controversial or argumentative or contentious. Now what she's saying here is that when that forgiveness is I mean, if we forgive someone, we can't call them out for what they did wrong. Put a one in the comment section if you know that's not true. Put a one in the comment section if you know that you can, call, you can forgive someone while still calling them out for what they did wrong. Forgiveness, does, that is her first flaw in the article. Forgiveness does not mean we can call out. We cannot call out what someone did wrong. Absolutely, we should be our, own, our strongest advocates. If somebody hurts you, you need to stand up for your hurt. If you're being abused, you need to stand up against your abuser. 
But that does not mean will we seek out suffering against the people who hurt us because that is just going to lead to more suffering. So first flaw of her article, but again, very well written. Um, she says the attitude of peace, love, and good vibes is shallow and lacks meaning. It something we use to fill up empty space without offering any kind of substance. Well, let me offer some substance to the, um, uh, to the author. Um, she, she talks about the, the uh, saying that we use every day. For people, advocates of forgiveness often say unforgiveness, uh, living with unforgiveness is poisoning yourself and hoping the other person dies. She says, well, let me explain something to you, to the readers. Forgiveness must be earned. Again, a fallacy. Forgiveness is not earned because our own forgiveness is not earned. All right? It's victim blaming. When we advocate for forgiveness, we are blaming the victim. We are saying that if you don't forgive, which is, again, crazy, um, if you don't forgive, there's some, somehow something wrong with you. Now, this is something that we talk about every week on Forgiveness Culture, that if you are somewhere where you're not ready to forgive, there's nothing wrong with you. There's nothing that makes you bad because you're not there yet. We are just saying we encourage you to go down that path so you can explore your own healing. It's not victim blaming by, by advocating forgiveness. It's victim self-injury. Think about this for a second, guys. If you, let's take a girl in high school, right? And her boyfriend makes comments about her physical appearance, right? Maybe she develops an eating disorder because of this. We don't blame the, we don't blame the girl and tell her that she's blaming, we're not blaming her because she develops an eating disorder. We're not doing that, but she's injuring herself by, by, by taking that hurt and turning that into something that's going to poison herself. Does that make sense? That's the same thing with unforgiveness. We're not saying that, thank you, Lily. We're not saying that forgiveness, that uh, unforgiveness, we're not blaming somebody because they forgive. We're saying that if they choose not to, they're injuring themselves. They're injuring themselves. We're not blaming them. We're not trying to tell them that what they're, what, that they're a bad person because they haven't, they're not there yet. We advocate for, um, uh, we advocate for, for people to seek healing. Thank you, Lily. Now, I, I have a lot more to go over, guys, but I'm already running over time, and I want to get to our forgiveness example. Uh, I am going to probably do this again next week, and I'm probably going to summarize this a little bit better um, because I really didn't have a whole lot of time to do that today, so I do apologize. But tune in next week for part two of that. I'm going to really dissect that a little bit more succinctly next week. So before we get to our guests, let us go into our forgiveness example of the week. Our forgiveness example comes from the Forgiveness Project book. If you haven't read it, I encourage you to pick it up. It does the same thing that we're doing, hosts people, it has people who are sharing different stories, the times they forgave, and how they were blessed by it. Now, one of the, uh, this is probably the most interesting story of the book, because this is the only example in the book of someone who says that they have not truly forgiven their, um, their offender. Now, Kath, this story is about a woman named Hat Kathy Harrington. And if y'all are just joining us, this is Forgiveness Culture, where we explore the hope and peace that can be found in forgiveness. We thank you for joining us here today. We're talking about an example uh, from the Forgiveness Project book, which is the inspiration for the show. And uh, this person's story, her name is Kathy Harrington. Thank you guys for all the gifts. I appreciate it. Now, Kathy's 26-year-old daughter, Leslie, was murdered back in 2004. Uh, Lily, thank you. Uh, her, Kathy's daughter older daughter. She had two daughters. One of her daughter was killed and her roommate was also killed. And for a year, they did not know who did it. They had to actually live with this pain and not even knowing who the offender was. And forever, Leslie, uh, Kathy said that she hated this person. And when she found out who it was, she hated him even more. And she advocated for the death penalty. But one of the things that she realized was that her advocating for the death penalty was actually coming at the, the, the cost of her own mental energy and mental wellness. Now, I am not advocating or defending or attacking the death penalty. I have mixed feelings on it myself, and I know a lot of us do. But one of the things that I found interesting was is the prosecutors in her case 
um, had made a plea deal with the defendant, but they were only making the plea deal if the victim agreed to it, which at first she didn't. The plea deal was that the uh, murderer was gonna spend life in prison with no chance of parole for killing her daughter and her roommate. Um, and Kathy said no. And for the better part of a year, she fought the, the judicial system to push for the death penalty. And they finally decided that they were gonna do it because that was what the victim wanted. And she decided that she was going to, uh, and they were gonna do a trial. And that was the only way that she was gonna be able to get the death penalty was to put herself through the trauma of a child. And then she, when, when the trial first started, she realized something. And I'm summarizing here for time, guys. She said, I did not want justice nearly as much as I wanted revenge. This man was going to spend the rest of his life in prison. He would never be able to hurt anybody in the free world again. I wasted my own freedom. I wasted my own mental energy. I wasted everything in my life advocate. Advocate, yes, she was living in a haunted mansion. Uh, thank you, Lily. I wasted so much in my life advocating for the death penalty when she could have just accepted the plea deal and uh, live. Thank you, by the way, Lily. And thank you, Harry. Um, she could have accepted the plea deal and just put this man, uh, let, allow this man to go to the prison. The reason why this is important is because she was willing to put herself through the trauma of this big, long trial. This trial that was going to take probably over uh, six months, where she's going to have to relive that trauma every day in court just to see this man die. And she said, I wasn't doing it for justice. I was doing it for revenge. And when I finally released the, the hope that this man would get the death penalty, and I released myself from having to go through the trauma of a trial, I felt more free. Now, Kathy said she's still working towards forgiveness. She's still not there yet. She still has not been able to release her hate for this man, and understandably so. One of the things that she said about forgiveness was that it's something that is simple, but not easy. Now, what is the difference, right? Something is simple, but it's not easy. Simple means that there's not a lot of steps to it. It's basic. Forgiveness is like that. It's releasing its power. It's not, it's not really a complicated process. Ease, easy means there's not a lot of effort to it. So while it may be simple, there takes a lot of effort, a lot of effort into realizing your own worth and your own freedom. Because a lot of the times, especially when Kathy was talking about in her case, she felt that her own worth and her own value were stolen from her by the murderer. So how can you forgive someone else when forgiveness is about reclaiming your self-worth? realizing you are better off living in freedom. You can't do that if your image, if your own self-image, if your own self-worth, if your own self-value are not strong. She said, I realize that I need to forgive one day. She says, I hope that I get there. I'm still working with my counselor every day to work out to building my own self-esteem, my own sense of value, and my own sense of worth. Because I know Without developing my own sense of worth, I will never be able to be to, to forgive him. That's a really powerful concept of forgiveness, guys, that we don't always talk about. You, if, if you want to forgive someone, you have to realize what you're worth. You have to realize how valuable you are, that you deserve to live without this crap on your life. So... If you're struggling with forgiveness, there's a good chance you're struggling with your own feelings of self-worth and self-value, either consciously or subconsciously. So take back your self-worth. Let go of that right to hate. Let go of that right to revenge. We're not releasing anyone from the consequences of their actions. They still need to be held accountable, but they don't need to occupy any more energy in your life than they deserve. If you're just joining us, this is Forgiveness Culture, and we're running about seven minutes over. I do apologize to our guest, but hopefully that's given her enough time to get some coffee, splash some water on her face. I don't know. But guys, this is a show every week where we explore the hope and peace that can be found in forgiveness, and we host guests every week who tell us a story about a time that they had to forgive someone and have the benefit that that, was, that had in their life and how they're living with freedom. Because guys, remember, forgiveness equals freedom. We all want to live free. None of us want to be a victim. Don't live as a victim. Live as a conqueror. Conquer the pain.
don't give it any more power. This week's guest, guys, I'm super, super excited about. One of my favorite people in the entire world. I don't know why I just talk like that. Um, but one of my favorite, let me talk a little bit more mask. <laughs> one of my uh, favorite people in like the entire world um, is our guest. Her name is Galena. And Galena, whenever you're ready, if you want to request that box, she is here. Oh, look at her. She's right on time. So y'all, please give it up for one of my favorite people ever. Hello, Galena. good morning. Hi, Galena. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Uh, Guys. So yeah, I actually just woke up and it's such a beautiful, bright pink sunrise that I would never see if I... Uh, <laughs> right? Not. Listen, that's oh, what yeah. forgiveness brings. Forgiveness brings the <laughs> sunrise, you know, it brings that joy and the warmth. Um, so guys, if y'all haven't favorited Galena, please go ahead and do so. Uh, Galena, tell us, for, for those of us who don't know you, um, tell us a little bit about, about yourself. Uh, I'm Galena, I'm 20 years old, I'm Russian, I study digital marketing communications, and I'm, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty good at forgiveness, so I might tell you something. And uh, what do you do here on the app? I, I stream. I started to stream uh, <laughs> just, to learn, just, to learn, <laughs> just to learn English, uh, but now it grew into something bigger and I cannot just like leave and I have a family here. So. And she's got a featured show every Thursday. Yeah, it's, it's post for now though, but like oh, it's, it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be soon again. It's, Sorry. It's, I'm going to come back and I've been a guest on the show. It's, <laughs> um, it's a great show. Um, so for, uh, forgiveness story. Okay. So Galena, first of all, thank you for joining us and waking up so early to be on the show. Um, I'm very, very thankful that you agreed to be on the show. Um, your story involves an ex-boyfriend. Yep. Okay. <laughs> tell us, uh, tell us a little bit about it. Uh, so, you know, it always, like it always does. It started pretty good. And, um, there was a lot of hopes for it and he was kind of like my type like strongly my types so i kind of did not see some red flags since the beginning so please guys don't tell me that i'm stupid <laughs> and whatever uh but uh it just it, it it always it started pretty fast and it grew pretty fast into something bigger like the person literally uh asked like me if i want to be his girlfriend on like let's say second date uh and I, yeah and i said no and the second time i said no to but for the third time he was like come on let's do it and i was like okay uh yeah <laughs> so he won you over with the insistence yeah yeah and then i realized that he wasn't he was insisting on yeah on being his girlfriend so fast because it's like one of manipulations that they do so basically he was a great manipulator but he showed his face too fast and uh, I remember we had this kind of argument that kind of changed everything. Uh, he was showing me something on his phone by um, broadcasting his own phone. And I just saw girls from Tinder on there that he literally messaged like this morning. And I told him, like, I know that you're talking to girls from Tinder. What's up with this? And he's like, what do you mean I talk to girls from Tinder? It's like false accusation. How do you know? I'm like, I just know. He's like, how do you know? If you won't tell me, I don't talk to girls from Tinder. I'm like, okay. And then he said, okay, and blocked me everywhere. <laughs> he blocked you? Yeah. While you uh, were still in the relationship? Kind of, yeah. And I was like, okay, did we break up? Can I like switch to another one? Um, <laughs> but then he appeared a couple of days ago and he just started messaging me like, hi, how are you doing? And what, one night I was feeling kind of sad and he messaged me and he said like can i come over i'm like yeah of course not like yeah of course but like yeah okay uh and i thought he's gonna apologize and stuff but he just started like trying to have a intercourse with me you know like okay. really badly like like it felt like he didn't have it for two weeks and he's like okay oh my god so basically uh, he, called, he called you over for a booty call basically kind of yeah and and uh he I don't know, he was very in, insist, insisting on it. And yeah, and and then he literally said sorry, I feel like just to have like, se like sex with me. And I don't know, yeah, that, that's 
the tone went and like we did have it because like there there was like I, I was saying no but long start. Um so yeah and then he just like we kind of got back maybe into a relationship and then he just he wasn't messaging me anymore. I don't know so it was like so weird. He was just like doing random things. I didn't understand anything. I was like when you know when you're in a relationship and you don't even understand like am I still in a relationship when he was already with someone else? Like what happened today? Uh and that was really bad. So it started out very soon. He wanted you to be his girlfriend. Um, things were okay at the beginning. He was talking to girls on Tinder. You called him out for this. He denied it. He lied about it. And then he blocked you. Yeah. And like, then he came back and he was like, Hey, let's hook up. Um, and then some time went by. And then he's talking to, to, to other girls again. I don't even know what happened to just stop replying to him because I realized how bad I feel in this. And like, and I realized that he cannot have a normal conversation. Like last time I tried to techno to have normal conversation with him, he said, Are you gonna say tell something positive or I'm gonna hang out? I'm like, okay, hang up, hang out, uh, hang up, hang up. And he hung up. And then he messaged me like two days later again, and he said, like, so why are you ignoring me? I'm like, what you mean I'm ignoring you? And he said, well, you hung up on me that day. And I was feeling sad. I'm like, what? You hung up on me. And you know, at this moment, you just like start thinking, like maybe I actually did hang up on him somehow. So yeah, he was gaslighting me too. Yeah, I was about to say, it sounds like uh, gaslighting. So uh, it's like when you, like basically he tries to make you feel bad for the actions that he's taking. He is... Yeah. Um, basically stringing you along, not giving you any consistency, uh, basically treating you like an option, not showing you any respect. And then when you call him out on it, it's like, thank you, Andrew. Uh, it's like, what, what's wrong with you? Are you going to be as if calling someone out and holding someone accountable for their actions is being negative? Well, um, you just like asking yourself, you know, at this at this point, you kind of blaming yourself more. Like this kind of people is their goal for you to blame yourself, and you feel wrong asking them out because you're like, well, if I did it, why would I ask him out? You know. Right. So what what happened next? Next, I just I watched a lot of videos on YouTube about narcissists. Yeah, girls, I see you, and about like gaslighting and about abuse and manipulations. And I realized that I don't think I will ever um, be happy in this kind of uh, relationship. But there are two parts of, can I talk about forgiveness already? Oh, I can. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, well, before, yeah, I want to get to the forgiveness. Before we do that, I want to ask one quick question. Can we talk about forgiveness? Yes, all day. Um, what were you, before you got, get to the top part where you talk about forgiveness, what, what were your feelings towards him? Because I know that when we spoke uh, initially, you said you had a lot of feelings of anger, a lot of really negative feelings. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, besides cutting his testicle and off and uh, killing yeah, all it's his- feature show. It's a feature show, feature show, feature <laughs> show, feature show, feature show, feature show. I always swear, but okay, I'm kidding. Um, well, yeah, of course I was angry. And I was like, how can you? I'm like so good. How can you like treat me like that? And everything I was inside myself and the other part of me was like well you did some mistakes you should fix it and you should give him like 145th chance and just like maybe work on this relationship more because like you did this wrong and this wrong uh so I was feeling and I was angry at him and angry at myself at the same time so it really put me like down and I was depressed for a long time and I couldn't even understand like what is wrong what is wrong because he never talked to me normally it was right. just like gaslighting me and I, I didn't understand his part at all and it's it's hard when like when when the, when the, with the gaslighting and with the with the negative way that he taught you it, it's hard when that is sprinkled with a few good memories like when you have a few good memories in there sometimes we like to hold on to those it's like oh we had that such a good time on this date or i remember this time when we had this uh, the way i felt this and like Sometimes that can almost overcloud the obvious, like, red flags and the obvious, like, you said, gaslighting and mm -hmm. manipulation. 
Um, so, okay, so I think through your example of what you wanted to do to him, we got a pretty a good idea of how you're angry with him. So you may move to forgiveness now. <laughs> Uh, Chris Casper is on vacation, everyone. So there you go. <laughs> He's gonna work good. I, I knew that. I knew that. That's why I said it. Uh, <laughs> um, well, first of all, to forgive him, first I needed to forgive myself, and I'll explain in what way. I actually realized it a couple of days ago. Like I didn't realize it uh, while I was doing it, but I realized it a couple of days ago when I started thinking about the show. Is um, he said sorry right before having an intercourse or whatever uh but i never trusted his words and i never forgave him at that point of life but i was still with him and i asked myself why uh was i doing this and i realized that i couldn't forgive myself for maybe making a mistake i'll explain so he is really 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 my type right besides all the manipulation stuff <laughs> like if he wasn't manipulating he would be like honestly a very good boyfriend for me uh and i was just scared of letting him go because i felt like i will blame myself if in five years i realized that um he was actually very good for me and i should have worked on this relationship and i knew i wouldn't let myself go i knew that every day i would be like oh my god you're so stupid you let him go you lost him and now you're gonna stay alone till the rest of your days and i couldn't forgive myself for making this like kind of mistake mm -hmm. but one day i told myself well if you're doing this if you're breaking up with him and it's, it's wrong then you're making a mistake but it's okay like i allow you to to make this mistake and you're gonna be fine we're gonna figure it out together me and galena <laughs> and then i forgave himself and my therapist kind of worked me uh, helped me in it and she said well he is having all this toxicity in him for a reason probably he's really hurt probably he has very low self-esteem and he's just struggling he will never have normal healthy relationship and he's going to be unhappy till the rest of your days like are you are you feeling sorry for him now or are you still angry at him and I just started feeling sorry, and I realized that his situation is kind of even worse than mine. So that's how I forgive him. You know, and it's so interesting. We always, we often talk about on this show how when we're struggling with forgiveness, sometimes perspective will help us. Not that that perspective excuses what they did, right? Not just because you've gone through this, he went through all this hurt himself, but that gives him the right to do this stuff. But we can get, we can get a little more insight into kind of why the reasons behind what the actions were and let me tell people for people in the comment section why this is really important when somebody hurts us and we're living with unforgiveness we have this really strong desire reaction to dehumanize someone and i know you can all relate to this I know you can all relate to this. Someone who really, really hurts you. We have this idea that this is a bad person. This person is like almost less than human because how could someone do? The problem with that is that that's not healthy. Nobody is less than human. Okay, people, we are. We all make mistakes. Some mistakes are worse than others. But when we can understand a little bit more about perspective, like you're talking about, we can understand. Well, this person's not just doing this just because. I was born to hurt Galena. That was why I was born. I was born so that one day I would hurt Galena and now I have fulfilled my purpose. But that's sometimes <laughs> how it feels. Like sometimes it feels when someone's hurting us like, this person was born to just hurt me. Like, like why, why did they do this? And we understand that's not the case and there's a little bit more to the story. Well, yeah, I kind of felt like it at first, but then as I said, I realized uh, and I started watching all these videos and it helped me too. I started uh, understanding, like I saw him as a person. I saw him as a, I, so my, my therapist always also asked me like, close your eyes and imagine him right now as feelings that he's probably having. And I just closed my eyes and I saw a very small, almost see-through creature that was just sitting in the dark room and crying and was very lonely and that's how i saw him and i realized that what that's what's inside him and i started feeling so sorry for him and i'm like oh my god i forgive you just please feel better <laughs> it was like this that's awesome um 
how did you, once you were able to achieve that forgiveness, how, how did that affect you? How did that make your life better? Well, of course it made it better right away. And I, uh, I, I let m myself go. I realized that it's a, it is a wrong person for me, at least at this time. And uh, I realized that I, I, I learned a lot of lessons too from him because like when I forgave him, I could see the whole situation really, um, how do I say it? Like without emotions, objectively. Mm -hmm. And I saw his mistake, I saw my mistake. I learned a lot from the situation and uh, by forgiving him, it let me completely walk out of this relationship and not coming back. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, do you have, do you have, I'm just curious, have you had any more interaction with him kind of since you're able to forgive him? Yeah. Yeah. He was messaging me. He was messaging me on Instagram because like, as I realized, narcissists cannot just let you go or like, and uh, I remember during relationship, he was, by the way, like making this weird jokes that kind of were supposed to put me down a little bit. Like, oh, you have such an ugly sweater today, something like this. But he was like making it in, in a funny way or like, you, you should never like make this kind of joke. It, mm -hmm. It's like stupid. Mm -hmm. uh, and he was, yeah, flex, flex girls, flex. Uh, so yeah, but he, he kind of stopped doing it, you know, at some point he tried to be like perfect again was talking like uh, about things I wanted to talk about messaging me on Instagram but yeah it was really easy to get back with him into a relationship and it was really hard to just step away from like a perfect boyfriend but manipulate it, manipulating kind of type uh, so yeah so it was good job, but I stepped um, out if you found yourself in a similar situation today like let's say you started dating someone else and he was demonstrating some of those same qualities how do you feel that your forgiveness has kind of prepared you to deal with something like that i would see this person not as a strong human being anymore not as healthy human being i would say that i, I would see that he is um not not healthy and he's in pain and probably he has very low self-esteem and he's trying to make mine the same uh like as low as his is and i will just see all that and i will realize that like a, a psychologically healthy human being it's really hard to be with like psychologically not healthy human being and i would just like step away right away and i wouldn't waste my time and i wouldn't be angry anymore at him and like going through all this depression anymore, for sure. You know, I, that's such an interesting point that you would see them because of your forgiveness, you see this person as, the, as for the insecurities that, that they have, for the insecurities that they, you know, the insecure person that they are and not mm -hmm. this bad person, but a weak person, a, a person who's damaged, which is, yeah. I think, just an amazing perspective and it's a very intelligent perspective, Galena, so well done. Um, something that I, I wouldn't have thought of, but, you know, I think, you know, the idea of narcissism is, is so foreign to me because, I, you know, I, 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 but anyways, I think, I don't have to deal with a lot of them, but I think that a lot of times they're compensating for maybe, like what you yeah. said, like some insecurities or, or something, um, that's going on in your life. Let me ask you this. If you hadn't forgiven your ex for, for what he put you through and for the, you know, for the relationship and how he treated you, how do you, like, what, where do you think you would, how do you think you would be different right now if you hadn't been able to forgive? I think first of all, I would get back into a relationship with him. Mm, okay. Interesting. I would feel sorry for myself as well. Because when you're not forgiving a person, you're saying, well, I'm a victim here. He's still a bad one and I'm a victim. And when you're saying that I'm a victim, it's really easy to go back to the person who thinks you're a victim too. Because wow. it's like taking an, like, it, it's easy, basically. Wow. That is so, I've never heard that before. See, this is why I love having guests on the show. Because you guys make me think of aspects of forgiveness. If you hadn't have forgiven him, you would have gone back to him because you had a you would have be you'd be classifying yourself as a victim 
and then re-victimizing yourself. Yeah, I am. That is, that is so, God, that's so powerful right there. Wow. Never would have thought about it like that. Um, what about the anger? What about all the anger? And yeah, it is deep, Chris. I agree. <laughs> what about the anger um, and the, the, the ill will and the hatred you had for him? Like, why don't you think that you're better off for holding on to that hate? Why, why don't you think that you're stronger because of that hate? Well, um, because one, one of my really clever friends once said that uh, where's your mind, what you're thinking about it, the energy goes the same way. And if you're thinking about hating someone all the time, and if you're hating someone, all your energy goes this way. And you don't have energy for other parts of life. So your health goes away, your, I don't know, friends go away, your studying, just like some self-care uh, when you're hating someone. So hating someone is the worst because like the person is always on your mind and you just, you're wasting too much energy on something that does not deserve it. Guy, I think Alina could be my co-host of this show. I don't know. Like you, you're, you're like, you, you, you put things in such a, like, like a succinct and, 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 uh, uh, intelligent way. I like it. Um, all right. So last question I have for you, uh, I ask this of all my guests. Um, and I think it's a really powerful question. Some people may be hearing your story, healing how this guy treated you or, you know, the way he controlled you and manipulated you. And he might, and they may say to themselves, that's great, but he doesn't deserve your forgiveness. So what would you say to someone who is, who's hearing your story and would tell you that he didn't deserve your forgiveness. Oh, okay. That, this is a this is a hard one. Sorry. <laughs> the, the co-host, the whole co-host job is off the table. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um. Oh, oh I feel like only we understood the joke. But okay. Um. Well, you just this kind of person would never forgive anyone i guess okay but there are some points and i still wonder like if you can can forget a person who did something like really wrong like for example killing another person right and i still don't think if like you can forgive it you can just like ex ex accept that the person made a mistake but i don't think you can ever forgive a person but like this kind of stuff when a person just this is a very hard question. You should have prepared me for this. Uh, <laughs> I honestly don't know. I would have just said, well, I, f I did for forgive. If you, d if it's easier for you not to forget, not to forgive, don't forgive. We're just like different. Well, I think that it's important to keep in mind is that for what, what, like, again, forgiving is not the same thing as pardoning someone, right? We're not saying that what they did has no consequences. We're not mm -hmm. saying that they don't have to face justice for what they did. So obviously, like our like our um, like our forgiveness example today with with Kath, with Kathy and her you know her daughter was was murdered. We're, we don't expect her to forgive the person and say, "Oh, you're good. That's fine. You killed my daughter. Have a great life." No, but what she's working on is saying, "I expect you to face justice. You're gonna you're gonna face the consequences of what you did." but I'm not going to spend my energy hating you. I'm not going to spend my energy, like you said, focusing on seeing you suffer because that's not how that person's in prison, right? That person's in prison. They're not, they're, they're not being affected by your, by your unforgiveness. You are. And I know, I know that he's going to suffer too. He will never find a girl, a health, psychologically healthy girlfriend. He will need someone with a low self-esteem who can, who can, he can be a con oh like in control of and he will never be fully happy so he faced his justice already too for sure um well galena that was a really great really great testimony really great story you made me think several times tonight which is i always like when my guests can put things in a way that expand my own mind so thank you so much for your testimony is there anything else that you want to say with regards to the forgiveness story or? Um... Well, guys, more love, less hate, you know? Absolutely. Let's all forgive. 
Um, and just for those who kind of wasn't here, who weren't here when you joined, can y'all, can you tell us a little bit, introduce yourself one more time for the, for the audience? Hey guys, I'm Galina, I'm 20 years old. I'm a student, I study digital marketing and communications and I've been streaming on here for two years already, grown my uh, family and really love the app, really love more. So please favorite him too. It was a great uh, experience and waking up at 5 a.m. is so amazing. Like, yeah, actually, you got to see the sunrise. Now, yeah. and guys, I, uh, I never do this. I've been on the app for two years, over two years. And in that time, I've seen a lot of battles and I've never ever shot in a battle before. But this Saturday I'm shooting in her battle. So y'all please favorite her and if you have a few extra credits or just want to give some emotional support um she does have a battle this saturday the emotional support really needed i'm like freaking out <laughs> yeah, but um but if if not favorite her go show her some love on her stream uh go tell her uh how awesome she is she needs to hear it 24 7. galena thank you so much for waking thank up you. so early and being a guest thank you it was fun Bye. Bye. Um, guys, this was Forgiveness Culture. I hope you enjoy the show, guys. Again, make sure y'all favorite Galena, uh, an amazing streamer. Um, and like I said, her show, even though it's on pause, is a lot of fun. It's called Cringe right there. The one with the hearts. Favorite her. Um, it's called Cringe. And like, basically, if you've ever seen me on a stream for more than about 10 seconds, it's basically about my whole life. All right, so just go check out our show um, because it's basically about my entire life, which is cringe. Um, anyways, this has been Forgiveness Culture, guys. If you are out there and you have a story of a time that you had to forgive someone in your life and you think that it could benefit uh, the live community, please reach out to me on Instagram. Uh, just hit my, my bio where it says more miserables right there. Hit the uh, Instagram link hit send me a message and uh we will we would love to hear your uh your story and perhaps get you on the show again go to emoji j's youtube channel if you would like to catch the replay of the show and listen to me stutter for uh, an hour because we all love listening to more stutter right um that's always a lot of fun um <laughs> but this has been forgiveness culture guys i don't know why i clap so much i was actually watching one of emoji j's videos a couple weeks ago and watching one of my shows and I realized like every five minutes I was clapping. I was like, was I like swatting like a, a fly or was there, were there gnats? Were there gnats in the house? I was just like clapping every five minutes. And I'm like, this is just, aw, thank you, Miss Hawk. Um, I don't know why I do it.